Hello everyone, this is John Glover and I'd like to take this time on January 29th, 2017 to introduce you all to this Gagat briefing. And as always, I'd like to take the time to share with you all the God order and the God news that every one of you needs to hear and digest. That God order news, or God news, is that God has ordained a black man, Professor Gioibo, with the ultimate intelligence of Eta sub infinity. Eta sub n is the formula which exactly represents intelligence, and n is the level of intelligence for that formula. God has designed for Professor Gioibo that n to be infinity, hence Eta sub infinity for Professor Ibo. Since black people share the same genes as Professor Gioibo, God has reordained the black race as the most intelligent, richest, and most powerful or undefeatable race. God Almighty's Grand Unified Theorem, nicknamed Gagat, is a revelation from God which infallibly proved that all theorems, also called everything that exists, and all equations, also known as morphisms, which can be isomorphisms or polymorphisms, past, present, and future, all originate out of one invariant if called GI, defined as God, with orthogonal components GIJ, and with a divergence, also called change, of GIJ, comma, J equals zero. In mathematics, you can choose any term to define a quantity. Just because God defined GI to be God doesn't automatically prove that it is God. For example, one can say milk originates out of the store. If the store is the ultimate origin point of the milk, then you can replace the term originates out of with its equivalent created by. However, we all know that milk doesn't originate out of the stores. It originates out of the cows. So in that case, you can't use the term originates out of, nor can you replace the term with created by. However, Gaga infallibly proved that GI is the ultimate origin of all theorems, also called everything that exists. So the phase originates out of, can be replaced with created by. And this proves infallibly that the GI defined here represents God, since God can be defined as the creator of everything. Now that God has been infallibly defined as GIJ, God's existence is the next point we have to deal with. God's existence can be infallibly proved if Gagat can prove that something exists. And this is quite easy, despite how difficult it sounds. It's quite easy to prove, and that's proving that a human being exists, like yourselves and myself. Existence of a human being is the proof of the existence of GIJ, because the GIJ has been infallibly proven to be the ultimate origin of everything. Therefore, because a human being exists, it infallibly proves the existence of God. That's one of the things that has to be understood in terms of how easy the proof of God's existence is just by the proof of the existence of a human being. Now, I defined the concept of morphism before, which can be isomorphisms and polymorphisms. They're also known in mathematics as equations. They map realities onto a mathematical space like our senses map things from using our senses, like our eyes, our ears, our hands, and so forth, onto our brains. That's what we call a, a morphism. There can be polymorphisms in the case of when we use our senses. And these morphisms or polymorphisms are a measure of intelligence. Since GI, which infallibly defines God, has the totality of all equations, GIJ and hence God constitutes the totality of all intelligence. The Gagat solution A to sub N, which all come out of GIJ of God, fundamentally represents all isomorphisms as well as all polymorphisms, and therefore contains all of intelligence, and hence infallibly proved that God not only contains all of intelligence, but God is all of intelligence. Gagat amazingly planted 
all eight sub-ends, and hence all of intelligence inside the brains of Professor Gabriel Audu Oyibo, and blessed him with the ultimate or totality of all intelligence with which to understand God and everything. This is how God ordained Professor Gio Yibo with the totality of all intelligence, or what we call here in the Ophapit Institute as the ultimate intelligence. And it can be modestly stated that God has ordained Professor Gio Yibo, the greatest genius and the most intelligent human being ever created. Since the black people share the same genes as Professor Gio Yibo, God has ordained black people by extension to be the most intelligent race, and this has been confirmed by Jim Crow through many of their own universities and other institutions, such as Gottingen University and Yale University. Now I'm going to take the time just to pull up in front of your screens this particular information so you can see it. Uh, just bear with me for one second. Just a second, everyone. Just one second, please bear with me. Uh, it's just a little sluggishness, but I got it. Can everyone see the document in front of them on their screen? Hello? Yes. Okay, that's good. Just want to make sure everyone's uh, at the, on the same page, uh, so to speak. Uh, can everyone all see it, though? I, I heard Miss uh, Donqua. Can everyone, can everyone else see it? Yes. Mr. Hearn, can you see it? Yes, I can. Can you see the document? The document yes. of the cows? Yes. Yeah, I see it, yeah. Praise God. This is the, the surrender from Gottingen University, which is important for us all to understand, especially as black people. Gottingen University is the headquarters of uh, white supremacy and the basis of the intelligence, headquarters of intelligence for the European people prior to Gaga. In the year 2005, as you can see in the red on the, below the blue insignia on the left-hand side of the page, you will see them the year uh, called the, the celebration that this particular document is talking about is the Gauss year 2005. 
a celebration honoring Professor Carl Frederick Gauss, who was considered in their university as the greatest mathematician since antiquity in the European society. To celebrate Gauss's 150th commemoration in terms of his passing in 1855, in the year 2005, they selected the greatest mathematics works to honor Professor Carl Frederick Gauss. Gagat, as you can see here at the very top of the list, was selected as the number one work to honor Professor Carl Frederick Gauss. Can everyone see that? Please, everyone here, answer at this point. It's important that everyone follows this point. Yes. Okay, thank you for that, Ms. Tanko, but how about everyone else? Can everyone else see as like Ms. Tanko said? Yep. Praise God. Now, God that being placed as number one work is important in light of the runners up, which tells you the why this posi particular positioning of Gagat is so crucial. I'm going to scroll down so you can see week 19 or NR19 to show you who was up against Gagat or who could have been put in that place as the number one position. If you look at week 19 at the bottom, which is uh, the bottom which I start with the cursor, you will see the names Sir Michael Atia and Daniel Yagonitzer, field medalist lectures. Can everyone see that at the bottom? Can everyone see it? Yes. Yes. Praise God. Sir Professor Michael Atia, who is he? Well, if you go and look at his Wikipedia page, which is coming up on your screen right now, you'll see that it just takes a while to load, just to bear in mind that. Sir Professor Michael Atia is a current day English mathematician who once held the most prestigious title at Cambridge University, which is the master of Trinity College. I'll highlight that in blue so you can see it on the screen. Okay, you can highlight a little too much, but uh, let me let me correct that. Okay, do you see the part in the second paragraph that's highlighted now that says Master of Trinity College, Cambridge? Do you see that? Yeah. It's important that you all respond because we have to make sure you understand this aspect. Yes. Okay, I hear Ms. Dankwa. What about the rest of you? Can you please yeah, yeah. answer? Yeah. Praise, Praise God for that. The Master Trinity College position is the most prestigious chair in the mathematics department from Cambridge University, which is in England. Atia is a successor to another famous mathematician who was ranked as one of the top three European mathematicians who came from uh, Cambridge by the name of Sir Professor Isaac Newton, which you are going to be seeing up on your screen now. Can everyone see his page up? Yep. Praise God. Yes. Newton was the first holder of that Master of Trinity College at Cambridge University. So Atia is a successor to Sir Professor Isaac Newton. In addition, in addition to that position at Gottingen, at, at Cambridge, excuse me. Atia has won a prize which is equivalent to Nobel Prize. Although there's no specific Nobel Prize in mathematics, there's the Field Medal, which is on your screen. Can everyone see that? Yes. Okay. Yes. Field Medal is an award which is equivalent to Nobel yeah. Prize for mathematicians. Yeah. And if you look at the part that's being highlighted right now in front of your screen, the sentence that's highlighted, you'll see the Field Medal and Abel Prize, although ignore the Abel Prize for the moment, but the Field Medal have often been described 
as the mathematician's Nobel Prize. Can everyone see that? Yes. Okay. This is a prize that's been around since 1936 yeah. and is awarded every four years to about two to three or four mathematicians. And if you scroll down, you'll see. Yeah. That's the list of some of the people who have won this prize over the years. If you look at as you can see, the first year being 1936. If you look at the screen at the very top in the year 1966, you'll see Atiyah's name. Can everyone see that? Yes. Atiyah won the prize of over 50 years ago in the year 1966. So it's important to understand up until the year 2002, which is the last year before the House year 2005 celebration, you will see how there were roughly 44 prize award equivalent for a field medalist, including a tier that have won the award. Let's give you a sample of the, not me, I will give you all the people that have been listed for this award. You'll see. And as we go up to the year 2002, uh, so with last week's uh, going up here. So you can see the basically 44 Nobel Prize award equivalents or field medalists that were listed in that work at week 19, which was the field medalist lectures. You just got a sample of the names and what the works and the honors of the field medals that, uh, in terms of the field medals that each one of these people won for their work. You all understand that? Yes. Okay. This is the listing that's at week 19. Now, any one of those points could have easily made Atia, the number one work to honor Professor Carl Frederick Gauss. One, he was a successor to Sir Professor Isaac Newton, whom Gauss had a lot of respect for, even though uh, Gauss came after Newton, and Gauss is considered to be, after the two, the better mathematician. Newton is given more credit towards his work in physics. Gauss did have a lot of respect for Newton. In addition, Atia has won an award which is equivalent to Nobel Prize in terms of the field medal. And his work is a listing of 44 field medalists, including himself. Any one of those points could have made his work the number one work to honor Gauss. His work was ranked inferior. And the whole 44 Nobel Prize award equivalents were ranked inferior to Gagat by Gottigan. Gottigan has, in effect, told the world that Gagat is worth more than 44 Nobel Prizes or field medals. Do you all understand that? Yes. You all understand. I heard Ms. Donkwa, what about the rest of you? Yep. It's important that you understand this point so you can understand why Gaga being placed as the number one work to honor Gauss is so critical. Now we're going to go to number 23. We're going back to the list. If you look at number two, week 23, that is, you'll see the name, and it's coming up just a uh, Bear in mind. Can everyone see week NR23 where it says Alexei Viktorov, Viktorov, Bozhinov, and Anatoly yeah. Kifermenko? Does everyone see that? Week 23 on the list in front of them? It's also yeah. NR23. Does everyone yeah. see that? Yeah. I couldn't hear you all. Yes. Yep. Yeah. Praise God. Who is Anatoly Kifermenko, you ask? Well, it's funny you should ask that because. Anatoly Fermenko is also a current-day mathematician, as you can see here on his page in Wikipedia. Anatoly Timovich Fermenko is a Russian mathematician who is part of the Moscow State University in the Russian, Russian Academy of Sciences. 
He works within the university system in Russia known as the Leningrad Moscow State University System. Like I said, he's a current day mathematician, so he's alive even today. Does everyone understand that? Yes, John. Yes. Um, I'm gonna have to leave in a minute. I have a place I have to go to. Um, I have to get ready to go. Uh, can I catch up later? What time will you be back so we know when to connect you back? I won't be back home till seven o'clock tonight. All right, we'll we'll connect you back at that time then if you're available. Okay, thank you. Okay, but uh, we hope you come come back soon and uh, everything works out. Okay, thank you. Okay. But uh, for everyone else, just wanted to let you know, Fermenko, like I said, is a Russian mathematician, part of the Leningrad Moscow State University system in Russia. He is a successor to another of the three top greatest European mathematicians by the name of Professor Leonard Euler. Can everyone see Euler on their screen yeah. right now? Everyone? everyone? Yes. Yeah. I only heard one voice there. Is there everyone hear that? Yeah. Okay, that's good. I just need to hear it louder. That's what I was just saying. Euler is important to understand because Euler is like Newton and Gauss, considered to be the top three European mathematicians. There's Gauss, Newton, and Euler. Euler is a German-Swiss mathematician. Although he is a Germanic-Swiss origin, he spent his most of his adult life in the Russian university system in the 1700s. He basically was in St. Petersburg, Russia, and basically the same areas that Moscow State and Leningrad universities, uh, Leningrad uh, basically take place, which is, means that he was in the same Russian university systems, which later Fomenko was part of. So in effect, Fomenko is a successor to Professor Euler. Can everyone see that? Yeah. Praise God. Euler basically was known as one of the top three European mathematicians, and Fermenko was a successor to Euler. Gauss had a lot of respect for Euler, too. Gauss came a little bit after Euler passed away in the year 1783. Gauss was born in 1777. So what's important to understand is that Euler was pretty much a predecessor to Gauss, just like Newton was. But he had a lot of respect for Euler. So he could have easily been, Fermenko I'm talking about now, could have easily been placed as the number one work to honor Professor Gauss and, and could have been placed as a central work to honor Gauss. However, Gottingen painfully ranked his work inferior to Gaga. That's why he was placed three places below where Gaga was at week 23. Can everyone see that? Can everyone see that? Yeah, yeah. Everyone? Because I only heard a voice. It's important when I ask these questions that I hear a vocal answer because it is important to show your understanding of this point. Yeah, John, I can just listen right now. I'm driving right now. I can't. I don't want to crash. I could not hear. I didn't hear that. Can you please repeat it and say it louder, please? Yeah, I'm driving right now. I don't want to crash, so I can just listen. Okay. okay. So, so that's basically why we have Professor Fermenko's work at week 23. Now, if you go to week 24 on that same celebration, you will see the name David Hilbert, Professor David Hilbert. Can everyone see that at NR24, the name David Hilbert? Yep. Praise God. Professor David Hilbert actually comes from the same university Professor Gauss is from. He is from Gottingen University. He also, like Gauss, headed the mathematics department at Gottingen. However, it was after Gauss, since Hilbert was a, he, was, he became as one of his successors. Uh, as you can see here, and can everyone see Hilbert's page on Wikipedia? Can everyone see his Yeah, good. Yeah. Hilbert was born in 1862 and died in 1943. He is considered to be the last of the great mathematicians. And as I say here, he is one of the most influential and universal mathematicians of the 19th and 20th centuries. 
He also popularized the search for what's now known as the Riemann hypothesis in 1900, the year 1900. He actually declared the Riemann hypothesis as the most important unsolved mathematics problem, which Gagat solved 90 years later in the year 1990. Hilbert is also known as not only being the last of the great mathematicians, but also overseeing 69 PhDs in mathematics in terms of doctoral students under him who got degrees in terms of PhD degrees under him and became professors in mathematics and stars in that field. Just to give you a sample of some of those people, if you look on the right of the screen about Hilbert, you will see under the, or the heading of doctoral students, you'll see the long list of names of people who got PhDs under him. And these are no slouches. One of the particular names on that list, can, it, can first of all, can everyone see the list on the right? Yep. Okay. On the right, you'll see names like Richard Courant. Can everyone see that name? I'm circling with the cursor. I see it. Okay. Who is Richard Courant, you ask? Richard Courant is one of the, uh, Professor Hilbert's students that actually left Germany to come to America to create the prestigious Courant Institute in New York University on Mercer Street in New York City. It's in Manhattan. The prestigious Courant Institute is crea has been, was created by Professor Courant, who was a student under Professor Hilbert. So what's important to understand here is that most of the time in mathematics, you're lucky when you're, if you, if you are a professor, if you have one student that gets a PhD under you, or maybe two, at the most you're expecting perhaps three. And most of the time, even when you get those people that get their degrees, they don't really become stars in the field. Hilbert oversaw 69 PhDs, which most of them, if not all, were stars in their field. So what's important to understand here is this is the person that was placed at that work, Professor Hilbert. Hilbert could have easily been placed as the number one work to honor Gauss, considering he comes from Göttingen. He is the head of the mathematics department at Göttingen. He was, a, at least one time he was one. He was also the last of the great mathematicians and oversaw 69 PhDs in mathematics. Any one of those points could have put him on that list, but even with the combined amount, would have made it seem like he would have been a choice to be put as the number worked on a gas. However, Gottigan very painfully ranked that work inferior to Gagat, which is why it is placed at week 23, sorry, 24, as opposed to week 26, two places below. So the question now remains, why was Gagat selected as the number one work to honor Professor Carl Frederick Gauss? The reason being is quite simple. It comes from understanding what Gagat is in its, in its essence about. Gagat has defined the concept of mathematics. Mathematics, despite how fancy the word appears and how it sometimes intimidates and scares people, it's a study of theorems or reality. Gagat also by its definition, God or mighties, grand unified theorem. All words that make up their acronym are important. But the last two are the most important in this particular instance, which is unified theorem. That means it can, Gagat, that is, contains all theorems. Since Gagat has defined mathematics as the study of theorems, and Gagat itself, from its definition, contains all theorems, one can now see infallibly and deduce infallibly how Gagat contains all of mathematics. Do you all understand? Yep. Do you all understand? I need to hear a, a, a positive understanding from you all about this. Do you all understand? I, I can't hear you. Does everyone understand? Yes. I'll go over it again. Gagat is defined by Gagat. I'm uh, sorry, Ga mathematics has been defined by Gagat as the study of theorems. 
God that from its definition, from the acronym of God, that is God Almighty's Grand Unified Theorem. The last two words are the ones we're focusing on the most in terms of the concept of unified theorem. Since Gagat has shown and proven that mathematics is the study of theorems, and Gagat has also shown that Gagat has all theorems from the unified theorem part of the definition of Gagat, one can now infallibly deduce that Gagat contains all of mathematics. Do you all understand? This is the basis of how Gagat was put at the number one work to honor Professor Carl Frederick Gauss. The other thing that's important to understand here is due to the nature of Jim Crow, which precludes black people from even getting anywhere near such a list or even in any such far out of this field, how Gagat forced the Germans who before Gagat would not have entertained any black person on this list whatsoever. Gagat forced them not only to put a black person at this list, but at the very top of the list. One of the things, or one of the main subjects, Gauss, although not his most prominent subject, but one of the things he is known for is his work in statistics, which deals with the concept of the Gaussian bell curve. Where Gagat has been placed in the celebration, if you keep in mind that there are 52 weeks in a year, if you divide 52 by 2, you get the number 26. In mathematics, when you have 26, which is the center, that is considered the median, the middle point. Median is a term that means middle. And the bell curve is what you call a symmetrical curve. So where you have 26 as the middle point, it means that 26 is the highest point on that curve. Every other week will have a matching component to an, or mirror image on the other side of the the, what you call the axis of symmetry, which goes through that point of the median point. But the week 26 has no peer, no equal. It is the highest point of what we call in mathematics an absolute maximum. So in light of that, you can now understand how Gagat being placed as the absolute maximum, the highest point in that list, and having no equal, is how Gagat has forced the Germans who beforehand would not have respected a black person or even entertained a black person on this list. They have now placed a black person's work not only on that list, but at the very top, the highest position. This is a surrender from the Germans and who represent the European people in general over to the black people. In effect, they have now handed over the baton from Gauss, who before Gagat was considered to be the greatest mathematician they have now handed it over to Professor Yibo because, one, Gagat, since it contains all mathematics and all theorems, means it can reproduce the work of week 19 of the Sir Professor Michael Atiyah and the other field medalist works. It can reproduce the work of Fermenko's work at week 23. It can reproduce the work of Professor David Hilbert, their own illustrious son from Gottingen. It can also reproduce the works of Newton, it can reproduce the works of Euler. It can reproduce the works of Riemann, who the Riemann, Riemann hypothesis is named after. And it can reproduce the works of Hill, uh, Gauss as well, whom the celebration was in dedication to. Since the Germans recognized that all mathematics can be reproduced from Gagat, there can be no discovery or uh, discovery in mathematics that supersedes Gagat, since Gagat is the number one discovery in mathematics. And that is the reason why they have taken the baton of excellence from Professor Gauss, and they have handed it now over to Professor Ebo, and formally and officially declared Professor Ebo as the greatest mathematician of all time that can never be surpassed. Past, present, and future infallibly. That last clause is important for everyone to understand because what this means with Light of Gagat is that no, no past work is it not, uh, it, all past mathematics works are reproducible out of Gagat. All present mathematics works are also reproducible from Gagat. And also all future mathematics works are also reproducible from Gagat. If you fast forward to the year 2071, someone claims to come up with a new level of mathematics, it is reproducible from Gagat, meaning it's contained within Gagat. You fast forward beyond that point to the year 3070. Someone claims to have come up with something new in mathematics. It is reproducible out of Gagat. 
You can go as far as the year 10 billion. Someone comes up with something new in mathematics, it is still embedded in Gagat. Gagat cannot be superseded, which is why it forced the Germans to put a black man from Africa as the number one work and the work of Gagat being the number one work to honor Professor Carl Frederick Gauss, effectively taking the baton of excellence from Gauss and handing it over to Professor Oyibo and officially declaring Professor Oyibo as the greatest mathematician of all time that can never be surpassed, past, present, and future, infallibly. So that is the first surrender from Jim Crow. Does everyone see that and understand that point? Yep. Praise God for that. We're now going to move to a little east, or a little further east of Germany, uh, to India. And that comes to the next me uh, message, which I want to bring up to everyone, which is Dasgupta, Professor Dasgupta, representing Asia. Can everyone see on their screen a paper that Dasgupta wrote? Yeah. This is gauge conditions for a billion churn simon system consistent with equations of motion. This is a paper that, as you can see here, Professor Dasgupta's name is to the right title. Can everyone see it? I'm circling it now. Can everyone see the name Crescendo Dasgupta? Yeah. Can everyone see it? Can everyone see that? Uh, it's important I hear a response from everyone. Yeah. Okay. Dasgupta is a Indian mathematical physicist coming from India. As you can see, the, the university is part of his Department of Physics, Jamia Milia Islamia, in New Delhi, in India. They even give the uh, zip code, or the, whatever they call the zip code over there. But what's important to understand is that Dasgupta himself searched for what they were looking for at the time, which is a unified field theory, which is already part of the problem. They were looking for a theory as opposed to a theorem. But ultimately, because of that, that was one of the many reasons why Dasgupta failed in finding it. But he had been searching for it. And his people, the Indian people, have won a great deal of Nobel Prizes towards the search for the, such a theory. Chandra Sekhar in 1983, another Indian, won a Nobel Prize for what's called the Chandra Sekhar limit uh, before a star reaches a certain point before it implodes and becomes a black hole. That was what he won the Nobel Prize for, Chandra Sekhar won in 1983. And then in, before that, in 1979, another Indian by the name of Abdul Salam, along with uh, two other um, non-black uh, non black, uh, European professors and so-called mathematical physicists, or mathematical physicists, in fact, they won a Nobel Prize in 1979 for what was called electromagnetic weak unification. There are four known forces in the physics world that are known. There's gravity, which is, occurs whenever there are two masses or any masses that have a distance between them, they exert a gravitational field. It's not so much felt on a personal level as a human level, but when you get into things that are massive in size, like planets or stars, and then you have things that have a high, large distance between them, like what planets do and stars do in space, they exert gravitational fields that are noticeable. That's gravity, which is one of the main first main forces that we deal with. Then there's electromagnetism. Electromagnetism comes from two different fields, uh, which were found to be completely connected, which is electric fields and magnetic fields. Electric fields, especially in electrostatics, deals with the concept of charges, positive or negative. And what's important to understand is electricity generates a field, but also if you have what's called the change in charge with respect to time, is known as current, a moving of such charge. That's what you consider when we deal with when you talk about electricity, running through wires and things of that nature. What's important to understand there is even in electricity, when you have the movements of charge, they are called fields that are what you call in, uh, that are induced orthogonal to those that, that the movement of the charge, which is what we call magnetic fields. Magnetic fields occurs when you have two different charges at poles in, di in certain instances, and those poles indicate certain uh, attraction and repulsion amongst each other. In other words, when you have two of the same charges together. They want to repel or go could be pushed away. Whereas you have two different charges, like a positive or negative charge, they attract. The concept to understand here is that these fields are generated through charges and through current, which is a, a change in position of charge as, as time goes on. So the important thing to understand is that's electromagnetism. Whenever there's a charge or a current, there's electromagnetic fields. 
Does everyone understand that so far? Hello? Does everyone understand what I've just been going over? Hello? Can everyone hear what I've just said? It's important I hear a response from the audience so I, I can understand if you're on the same page or if you have questions or things like that. Does everyone understand? Can everyone or can anyone respond to indicate that they are listening and understanding what's going on here? Can you hear me? Mr. Hearn, can you hear me? Miss Edgehill, can you hear me? Can anyone hear me at this point? Can anyone respond? I can't hear anyone. Is anyone listening? Can anyone listen or hear what I, to what I've just said? Can anyone explain or present that they understood or that they heard what I said?
All right, I'll go back.